Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey Houston, we got no problems here. Today we're going to figure out how to simplify acceleration. Vroom, vroom, it's getting faster and faster, sort of. It has to do with velocity and time and distance. So what is it? Well, so what's acceleration? So we've got the speed, direction, or both? What is going on? So what's acceleration? It's caused by a change in speed. Now this, what does that mean? Going faster, right? So you're going 10 miles an hour, and then soon you're going 20, and then 30, and then 40 miles an hour. That's exchanging your speed. But it also can be caused by a change in direction. So let's say you're going around a curve of a bank. You feel that, don't you? You feel that in your body. Your body wants to go this way, but since you're changing direction at a constant velocity, that's called acceleration. And by the way, I should say going faster. It could also be going slower. We sometimes call that deceleration, but that is still acceleration in the negative direction. Or sometimes it could be both. So again, you could be going around a curve and speeding up. That's an acceleration kind of in two different dimensions. So the definition of an acceleration is a, no, it's a vector, so it has direction, right? So that's why we have this arrow up here. It's equal to the change in uh, velocity. Again, notice the arrow, meaning it's a vector, divided by the change in time. Or you might write it like this, a arrow is equal to v2 arrow minus v1 arrow divided by t2 minus t1. So it's a change, if you think about it, acceleration, let's write this down. This is a change in the velocity. Now remember, when we say change in velocity, we're referring to change in the velocity. It could be the change in the direction, or the speed, or both. And what are the units typically on acceleration? They are typically in meters per second squared. You could also do, you know, you know, kilometers per hour squared. Any unit of distance divided by time squared. But almost exclusively, we're going to be using the units of meters per second squared. And when we say meters per second squared, it would be meter over second times second. So it's, it's easy to write it like that because that will help us in other things. So let's do a couple problems here. So we've got this situation. Try it. We've got the bus. Find the average acceleration of a bus that reaches a top speed of this many meters per second from rest in 22.8 seconds. So he started at rest, right? Let's draw a picture, right? He started at rest, here, zero, and that at 22.8 seconds, he was traveling with a velocity equal to 14.2 uh, meters per second. So his change in velocity, he went from 14, zero to 14.2, so that's the change. So acceleration is delta V over delta T which will be 14.2 meters per second divided by 22.8 meters per second. I get my calculator out, right? And I take 14.2 divided by, what is it again? 22.8, and I get 0.622 meters per second squared. Now let's explain what that means. That means that every second my bus is going 0.62 meters per second more. After one second I'm going 0.62. After two seconds I'm going 1.2. After three seconds it's uh, 1.8. You just keep adding 0.6 for every second. All right? And I think we should probably fill this in. It's meters per second squared. We've already said that. So True or false? Simple questions. Acceleration occurs when a bicycle moves consistently in a straight line. Eh. False. Why is that false? Because there's no change in velocity. Consistently means in constant velocity, and there's no change in direction. A raft moves from side to side as it floats down the rapids. True. Ding, ding, ding. True. This one's true. Why? Because it is moving side to side, so it's a directional change. A car pulls into a parking spot. Again, ding, 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 true, because when you pull in a parking spot, you're going to have to decelerate, slow down to stop. So it is changing its speed, right? Changing the speed 
That's why this one's true. This was here, this is changing direction, right? You see the idea. So that's the introduction to acceleration. Let's now jump and realize that we actually have five critical equations that we need to jot down. These equations are going to become like your total friend. And we're going to talk about each equation a little bit in detail as we work this throughout, throughout this whole uh, unit, if you will. So let's just kind of jot down each of these questions. Qu equation number one, it's going to be V2 right, equals V1 plus A delta T. So if you're trying to solve for a new velocity, if you know the acceleration, so we start with an initial velocity, that should be an arrow, and I know the acceleration, I can solve for the uh, final velocity, V2 being the, the final velocity. Equation number two, now this is an interesting one because it has to do with distance. We can say that uh, delta D arrow, now D is the displacement, right? is equal to one-half, essentially what we're doing is we're substituting, well, I'll, I'll show that later, one-half times V2 arrow plus V1 arrow times delta T. The third equation, you're going to see how these apply later on, but it's just these are like the critical equations. Delta D, again, this is displacement, is equal to V1 arrow, Equation four is delta D, to get a vector, this is displacement, is equal to V2 arrow delta T minus one half AT squared. Okay? And then lastly, equation five, I'll put it right here. All right, this is v2, so the velocity, is equal to v1 squared, and this is v2 squared, my bad, um, plus 2a delta d. Now, why are these important? Because you're going to use these equations if you're trying to solve for v2 or d or d or uh, whatever it's asking for. These equations are going to help you solve uh, like a million different problems. So let's, let's watch ourselves and try and figure out if we can like solve a problem. A monorail travels in a straight line from rest, reaching its maximum velocity of 145 kilometers per hour to the north after 22 seconds. What is the average acceleration of the monorail during that time? So now what we want to do is we're going to look back and find out which equation applies. So which equation are we going to use here? Number one, number two, number three, number four, or number five? Now, hopefully you're realizing that, the, I'm giving you the easy one first, it's going to be number one right here, right? Because I want to find a new velocity. So what am I going to do here? So I'm going to use that equation. So what I want you to do, this is sort of a good pattern, is you have to sort of identify which equation you want to use, right? So uh, let me change the ink color here. I'm going to jot down that equation. Actually, I'm going to write down what I know. I know that V1, right? is equal to the initial, this is the initial speed, zero meters per second. I know that V2 is equal to 145 kilometers per hour. I'm writing down what I know, all right? This is just variables. And I know delta T, and that's equal to 22 seconds. And they're asking for A. So I'm just like trying to fill this out. Then actually what I would do is I'd go back and I look at my equations. Oops. I look at my equations and realize that this is the equation I want to, uh, that I, I need, right? Because I'm trying to fall in a, and I've got all these other variables. I know v2, v1, and delta t. So I'm going to use this equation right here, right? Which is, of course, right, v2 equals v1 plus a delta t. Now I'm not putting my arrows in like I probably should, but you get the idea. So let's like plug in what we don't know. V2 is 145 equals V1, 0, plus A times delta T, which is 22. So now I'm just trying to solve for A, so I can rearrange this, 145 equals, let's call that 22A. Does that make sense? 
Divide both sides by 22, a little algebra here. 22's cancel, and A is whatever, take the calculator out, 145, divided by 22, and I get 6.59. Now let's talk about this moment here. Uh, we've got an issue, don't we? That's kilometers per hour, and this is in seconds. Ew, okay, so that'd be kilometers <laughs> per hour seconds. So if I want to get it to meters per second, all right, I would have to multiply by there is one hour in and uh, 3,600 seconds. So the hours cancel. And I want to get kilometers to meters. So I'd say one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Now, we, we could actually say the acceleration is 6.59 kilometer hour seconds, uh, but no, you would never do it that way. So now I take my calculator and I take my 6.59 divided by 3,600 uh, times 1,000, and I get 1.83 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration. Now, a simpler way might have been just to convert this to meters per second first and then solve the problem. So um, if you have different units, you've got to kind of play the game on the units, right? So let's talk through. This is actually the interesting steps. Let's see, watch the steps. Which variables are you given? Notice that was my first step. Which variable must be solved? Notice I did that here. Which equation should you use? I figured that out here. This is the steps, right? Does this answer seem reasonable? Uh, I got this number, 6.59 kilometers per hour second. I realized that was a problem, so what I had to do is I had to say, oops, and I converted. And how many significant figures should the final answer be? Actually, I don't think I looked at that. 145 and 22. Actually, I would just say 1.8 because I've got only two significant digits in the 22 se uh, seconds. So that's the steps that you would do to solve the problem. So that's our, our video on acceleration and what acceleration is. There's these five cool equations. You're going to become like intimately familiar with the five equations, and then it will solve so many awesome, 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 awesome? What's an awesome? I don't know. <laughs> Problems. We'll see you in class. Okay, we've had a problem here. This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem.